Jeremy, you got a hand for us here? I do. It's a uh, 10, 10, no limit at parks. I know you like those ah. parks hands. Are you a CLP website subscriber? Uh, yeah, I used to uh, do some CLP work back in the day and just recently rejoined. Oh, okay. Kind of getting back into poker a little bit more again. I don't know if you knew. Um, oh, by the way, I also have not found my blind date episode. That was, we were supposed to go to Dennis, Dennis Rodman's house in Orange County. Um, I don't know if you know about the Philly meetup um, that we're having at the end of the week, but I will be at parks on Friday. So sounds, you'll sounds see me good. There. Yeah. All right. So 1010 at parks. My understanding is this game runs always, not just on Tuesdays, as people have told me. Yeah, I've seen it run some other days. I don't play there really often. I live a couple hours away, but okay. it is one of my favorite places to play. Um, typically, I play more PLO these days, but um, this was actually two Tuesdays ago. First thing in the morning, they had one game running and I actually sat down. A uh, quick backstory. Um, so I, I went to sit down, I think it was eight handed and, uh, bought in for 2k and, uh, they, they told me that they were doing the mandatory under the gun straddle for 20. So I waited one hand and actually this, this hand was my first hand. I came in as the straddle. And this is a 3k cap game. Is that right? Yeah, I think it's a thousand to three thousand mm -hmm. or fifteen hundred or three thousand. I'm not I'm okay. not sure exactly, but I think it's three K cap. So you're in the straddle. Okay. I'm in the straddle. Yep. Um it actually folds around to the button. Okay. Who raises to sixty. And did you buy in for the three K? I bought in for two K. This is this is my first hand of the table actually. All right. So here's in the straddle with two K and straddle. Okay, what do you have? Uh, I have nine, ten of hearts. So the button makes it 60. Mm -hmm. Both blinds actually folded. Mm -hmm. I have nine, ten of hearts and I complete for 40. This is a pretty good. I mean, first of all, this is a slam dunk three bet. If any of those blinds called, like if the small blind called or the big blind call, I'm squeezing this all day long. Now, obviously you can call with a lot of in between hands, uh, heads up here, but I kind of like a three bet here um against a button open i mean it's like a partials you know you know you can obviously do call but these sort of direct suited connectors the higher they are like i'd be doing a lot of three betting with suited broadways this is obviously you can call this a suited broadway but i mean it's against a button open i mean i think calling is fine too but i would be three betting sometimes and i would absolutely squeeze if somebody called in between but your head's up okay so pot's like 120 right yeah and and i've never played with this button before but you know he was sitting there with about 3500 and I just kind of got the vibe that he was comfortable and, you know, he played a lot and that, you know, if I three bet, he may take some light hands and kind of four bet me and just, just try to play in positions. So I thought, you know what, let's go heads up here and kind of see what happens. So, uh, there's about 140 okay. in the pot Yep. and the flop comes nine of spades, mm -hmm. 10 of clubs, jack of spades. So I flop bottom two pair. Interesting board here. Interesting board here for nine ten, right? I mean, it's obviously a very wet board, and it's with a button open. I mean, it could definitely hit both of our ranges pretty good. Yeah, the thing about this board, I, I can't remember the thing off the top of my head. I remember a, a hand similar this like way back when that Phil Galfon posted. This was like 10, 15 years ago. The thing about this board is, is that a lot of times, depending on how you play it, right? because it's so textured and you've got bottom two here the times where you play a big pot meaning like if you come after this board super super aggressive and your opponent sort of gets it in with you i'm not saying you're going to do that um all the hands that he will play a large pot with you will have very very good equity at the least right like like queen you know you know what i'm saying like queens um you know whatever flush draw two overs plus a straight draw so yes you flop bottom two but i wouldn't be going you know buck wild you know what i mean right so my plan actually i didn't really love the flop um i mean obviously it's good for my hand but it's also bad like you said that if he puts a lot of money in he's gonna have a lot of equity so i decided to check and mm -hmm. i thought if you check back it's not the end of the world i can kind of see what the turn is kind of make a decision on if i want to lead the turn or not and if he bet small i thought maybe i could do a check raise but he actually did down bet to 40 so it just kind of felt like 
he wasn't protecting too much. I felt like if he had a hand like Queens or Kings or, you know, maybe Ace Jack, maybe he'd be betting a little bit bigger for protection. So it kind of just felt like a, just a standard C bet, you know? Um, and so I ended up deciding to be out, being out of position. I wanted to kind of take control of the betting and just, you know, kind of see what happened on the turn. So I actually check raised to 130. This is really interesting because there's so many different options here. So you go to 130 because we had just done a podcast a couple weeks ago about leading out, um, leading out on the flop. It's usually multi-way as opposed to heads up. Um, I wonder if this could be one of those times where there's going to be a lot of checkbacks. Now, you had said that you thought it was just like a regular kind of C bet. I don't know how many like how often this board is really see bet um without at least decent equity unless it's just like a pure bluff like just absolute air so i'm i'm a i don't know if i want to go i don't know if i want to play this hand as a check raise here to one third it, it's just like this hand is so dependent on a lot of turn cards if you want to get get on board and say well i'm just making an equity protection type of thing and you know sometimes that's lost on us a little bit and hold them where you can make bets to just take it down it's more done in tournaments but um there's not a lot of bricks for you if you get called i mean that's the only thing that i would that i would say now if you're hopping on small sizing fine but you kind of it's almost like you kind of don't want to get called here if you make it 130 you know what i mean i mean it's 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 close cuz the button can be wide but there's there there's a lot of things part of my thinking was i'm okay just taking this down now like he he doesn't have much equity he seemed like he was a pretty aggressive player so i didn't want to just check call and then have like a turn that i'm not really sure if it's good or bad for me and then have you know me check and then him bet three quarters pot and then i'm in kind of a tough spot where i'm kind of handcuffed and so um i just felt like i was just gonna check raise here kind of see what happened and i also thought i could get a little bit of value like if he has a hand like ace queen or ace king or you know king jack something like that i can kind of protect a little bit and get a little bit of value at the same time i guess from certain hands so I, it was just kind of it's a weird flop in a weird situation so that's just what i decided to do okay um, and he ended up grabbing, grabbing a, uh, black hundred dollar chip and the way he called, he didn't look like it was like, it didn't feel like he was on a flush draw or had like a big draw. It just felt like one of those hands where, Hey, I'm going to float this guy here and, um, float, with, well, float on a does. float on a 10 Jack nine board. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> I mean, if he has a hand like ace deuce of clubs with a backdoor flush draw something like uh, that you know what i mean i mean and, those, and those should all be kind of folds a... i would think there's no i i mean i there wouldn't be I, I wouldn't have i would not be floating with these two clubs to your, to your check raise personally right. but okay so he he calls so so you guys put in 260 um on the flop and the pot's like 400 right exactly okay yeah. so the turn is the ace of clubs which brings a club draw as well so now the board is the board is ten, so the board is jack ten nine with front door spades. The turn is the ace of clubs. It brings a backdoor club draw. It doesn't really change anything in the sense of um, king queen was already there, but possibly some aces up or something like that. Or if you had pocket aces, if you're unlucky enough, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. Right, and I just didn't feel like I, I don't know why. I just kind of got a sense that you know if the ace helped him, it was just because he had he just turned one pair. I, I don't know why, but. Um, at first glance, it didn't look like a good card, but I didn't want to slow down, just check and have him pot it, and you know me be in a kind of a weird situation. I don't think it's I don't think it's terrible to continue to bet though, too, right? Because you know you got not flush right. draws that are going to call. If he has like you know King Jack, Queen Jack, he's probably still going to call. So I, right. I I don't think that I'm going to necessarily be like, oh my god, I'm gonna I'm gonna check, right? You know. So I I took kind of an in between. Clean sizing mm -hmm. with 230. I don't know what you think of that. I was kind of thinking like 250 to 275. I don't hate it. You know, I don't hate it. Um, so you go 230. I go 230, and he calls pretty pretty quickly again. So he call, so button calls, and now right. 460. So now we're at 860. Let me ask you this question. I don't know what the river is. I don't remember, but let's say the river is like a red deuce. Okay. So it's like a red, total brick, right? What were you going to do on the river? Do you think your hand is clean enough to to value bet? 
at the end? Oh, yeah. I was hoping for a Red Deuce 3, 4, something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. I was definitely going to go for some value there, um, just in case he did somehow float me with an ace and, you know, maybe like a hand like Ace Queen. Now he hits a top pair. Uh, so I, I'm probably betting something like 450 to 500 on the river for value. Um, but we didn't we didn't get to that point because the river actually brought in the front door spades. It was, I believe, the five of spades. Okay, so five of spades comes in. Right. Yeah, I, I think now your hand has probably run out of value, right, for a couple of reasons. I mean, not only does he have spades in his range, but if he doesn't, it's pretty optimistic to think you can get called by one pair when some of your bluffs contain spades, right? Right. So I, yeah. I, I thought this would be a good bluff catcher hand. And I really felt like if he had some showdown value at this point, he's probably just going to check back a lot. And so I can get the showdown. Sure. Um, so I ended up checking pretty quickly and he ended up thinking for about seven, eight seconds. And then he asked me how, how much I had behind. Mm -hmm. I told him I started the hammer with 2000 and then pretty much immediately he took a pumpkin and about 3000 and blacks and slid them forward to put me all in for 1580 effective. So he's making over a pot size bet here, right? Yeah. Almost a two, two X pot yeah. bet here. Because, and you've put in, yeah, like you said, like 400 and change. So button all in for 1580. I mean, that's, it, 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 it is a little bit bizarre, the sizing, right? I mean, a couple things kind of go through my mind. I mean, you did check raise the flop, right? So, and you continued on the turn. So he very well might think, I mean, you guys don't have any history. He very well might think you do have two pair plus, maybe you flopped a straight or something like that. And there are times when I think that somebody, I haven't seen them before. Maybe I think they're a recreational player and they've got two pair plus. They just don't want to fold. So I, if I make a draw, I will go for maximum value. I mean, that's just something, right? It is, right. you know, it's and a ve so very wet card. I don't know if your hand necessarily is the best your hand probably is not the best bluff catcher against spades. The fact that you have two pair almost becomes irrelevant because I don't think he's turning an ace here into a bluff. Uh, exactly. Like ace, and the spades already got there anyways. So, yeah. man. So my, my thoughts were that if he had just a pair of aces, a lot of times he's going to check back. So when he bets like this, I don't even see him doing this with a straight. If he somehow slow played a straight, now that the flush comes in, mm -hmm. there's no way he's 2xing the pot. Um, I also was kind of thinking if he had the nut flush, you know, if he had like ace, deuce of spades, would he really play it this way and then jam the river? You know, you you think he'd want to get value on the river, you know, bet five, six hundred, try to get two pair or a straight to call or a set to call. Um, let me ask you though, like what, then, so what are the, um, what are the logical bluffs that he could have here? If he's not turning ace X into a bluff again, it's Jack 10, nine ace front door spades, back door clubs and the river is the five of spades. Well, I think there's some, I think there's some straight draw, flush draw hands on the flop that miss. Well, you're talking about on the back door side on the. On the back door I, I think side. there are some straight draw hands that have maybe like the king of spades in them that could potentially bluff. But again, I just didn't see that. By king jack, you mean, which is like top pair, king jack into a bluff, king ten into a bluff. Yeah, something like king jack of king jack with the king of spades, king nine with the king of spades, king ten with the king of spades, something like that. Um, you know, it could have been something like. Ace of spades, queen offsuit. Maybe he just felt like I had two pair and he didn't want to just check and go to showdown with know. just top pair. I, well, it, it's, it was just I, 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 just, I just I think that a lot of ace X check, but let me go down the weeds here because looking at the board, just so I think the reason why it might be so hard to bluff catch here though, too, is is that I mean I know it's a button open, but a lot of these straight draws are going to be paired up too here too. Like queen eight is, is a straight anyways, right? Like anything that's open-ended with a queen that's, you know, somehow right. logical, depending on how far down he went. Like, so maybe like, maybe like queen up and down, like queen five of hearts that continues because it's open-ended, right? And then if you really go into the weeds, king X of clubs on the backdoor side, 
which is a gut shot again sort of on an unpaired type of thing like if you had king nine of clubs okay something like that right king you know you pick he okay. picks up the back door but oh god i mean and again if you want to take a look at it from you know kind of a, an mdf perspective here this is probably the absolute worst hand here right would you would you not agree that this is probably the absolute worst hand that you check raise for value here on the flop oh yeah yeah sure. yeah sure. so when you so that you're sort of getting here with the absolute worst hand and um you know he's betting yeah. over 2x the size of the pot so if you want to say like well you know i need to call with like the top you know 40 percent of hands that i get here with whatever the mdf calculation is um you, you probably have much better hands, you know, to, to call with. I'm trying to think off the top of my head, you know, with what you represent, you obviously want to have some sort of spade in your hand too. Like say, for example, like you had, you had, um, I don't know if you would defend with like queen eight off, but if you had like queen eight with like the queen of spades or king queen with a spade, right. Um, which would be a straight, right. you're going to call, um, but yeah, I, I mean, I think I let this one go just because I don't know if ASAX is turning it enough into a bluff. I do agree with you that the sizing is a little bit peculiar, but is a very, very difficult spot, I think, to to make a call here with, with yeah. bottom two. The sizing is actually what kind of made me discount that I'm at the bottom of my range uh, for bluff catching, just because I just felt like, I just felt like it, he just really wanted me to fold, you know? And so... um I just couldn't see him having any smaller flushes either. Like if he has the nut flush, I'm thinking he's going to, you know, have more of a value size. He's not going to try to blow me off of a two pair or set kind of hand, you know? So you're just thinking that the, the whole thing is peculiar because of large sizing at the end. I get that. Yeah. 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 And I was trying to think what smaller flushes would he do this? Like, would someone ever do this with a smaller flush when I could easily have the nut flush? Um, and what smaller flushes are there? Seven, eight of spades is a flop straight. So I think that gets played differently um it would have to be like some weird hand like a like a king six seven you know, of spades six or something of spades or something it'd have to be like a just a very weird hand and again i just didn't feel like he would you know 2x the pot with second nut flush when so like what is what is he hoping to get called by you know, so it sounds to me like you know. called is that right so i i did call and he mucked right away and then um shortly after he was kind of talking to me about the hand and, and I said, what did you have like King Jack of clubs or something? And, mm -hmm. and he said, no, but he said, you would have been upset if the river was a club. He said, I, I had a pair and picked up the flush draw on the turn. So I'm guessing right. he had a hand like eight, nine of clubs, maybe open-ended with bottom pair and backdoor flush draw. Jack seven any, any or, or any, he could have top pair with club. I mean, remember he's opening from the button, Jack six of clubs, Jack seven of clubs, some nine X of club type of hand, right? Um, obviously he knows that his hand is no good. So yeah, I mean, that, 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 like when I was talking about, like it, it it's pretty much prim primarily going to be something on the back door side that picked up clubs would be, you know, the bluff. So, right. yeah, it's the interesting, interesting thing is if he had bet something like seven or 800, I, I think I might actually fold. I think, <laughs> we, the, bet, I think it, the bet sizing kind of threw me way off. You it's, know? it's pretty interesting how that sometimes works out where sometimes in these spots, like, if you bet less as a bluff, not only you're risking less, but the times that you get the folds are as much as if you bet more, right? Right. <laughs> in a, and, in a, in a the live other, dynamic. Interesting, the other interesting thing that I kind of thought about after this hand was, you know, if I'm in his shoes and I'm raising the button, let's say I had ace deuce of spades or ace three of spades and I played the hand like that, it kind of would be pretty cool once in a while to you know, two X the pot on the river because uh, against a thinking player, they're going to have to be thinking, would he ever do this with like a flush here? Like right. he would want to get paid. So, you know, a bet like that might actually get called by the lower end of a bluff catching range like that. So, well, this, well, do, I do you remember what I, do you remember what I said? Do you remember the very first thing that I said that at the river about the large bet size? Do you remember the very first thing that I said? Um, I said at you commerce. Said like a, I said at commerce. If I thought someone had two pair plus, because they check raised right. the flop, I, I might take this sizing <laughs> for 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 a flush for for the nut flush because I think I'm going to get paid off. Now it's a little bit different from what you're talking about. You're sort of saying it's more deceptive, 
maybe I was talking about just that people didn't want to fold hands. And obviously you're capable of folding bottom two. But interesting call. I thank you. Thank you very much. It's an interesting hand.